Welcome back to Learn With A Classic. And just a little thing before we start the video. This was filmed over a weekend and I was really under some time constraint. I didn't have that much time that weekend to get the Daimler on the road. I haven't driven it really since October. I just really briefly wanted to go through the car and get it so it would hopefully pass an MOT on Monday. Things went pretty well, but we'll see some things did not go to plan. So here is the video of everything I went through to try and get the Daimler through its MOT. Here we are down in storage. Here is the Daimler next to the XJ6, which as you know, is pretty much dead right now. I'll put a link to the previous videos up above if you want to check that out, but basically it needs a new engine. But I'm going to take the wheels from it. It's going to go onto the Daimler where they were originally, because these are summer tires and very worn out, but those are great winter tires. So they'll go on there. And then I need to try and fix everything that I want to fix for an MOT as quickly as possible. It's Saturday right now, and I want to get this thing to an MOT possibly Monday or something. Um, at least I really, really hope so. So what needs to be done is, well, the interior needs to be put back together. I um, It's going to be that's a pretty quick thing. I'll do that off camera for you guys because you saw me take it all apart. I still need to get parts for the fans, so just put all that back together. That should be fine. Otherwise, I think it's just check over the lights. I think there's a Parker light or something not working, so that is one thing. Everything else is pretty much fine on the car. Swap over the wheels, and then there is an oil leak, which I am going to try and rectify. And if it feels like it takes way too much time, then I'm not going to do it at this moment. But basically, down there, let's see if I can put the light there so you guys can hopefully see. Right there is a pump. That pump is for the self-leveling rear suspension, which has been removed on this car like it has on most of them. It wasn't a great system. Lots of people removed it, put the conventional suspension in. And then they just leave the pump there and they blank it off and it's leaking. And it uses the same reservoir as the power steering fluid. The power steering pump is down there. So it leaks out and then you run out of power steering fluid. And basically it just goes down over all the belts. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to pass uh, MOT with it or not. It's not actively dripping, but uh, it more drips when the car sits, really not when you drive it. But I want to try remove that pump because on the later cars like in the car doesn't have that or on an X300 where I got this off this plate can be put in place here instead uh, in theory with a gasket and then you can just remove the pump remove all of this as well and a few other things block off a line and that should be good I would like to mention that I got this as a great gift from a local Jaguar specialist known as Joe's Garage. So if you're here in Sweden and you need any Jaguar parts, they're really good people to go to. I was talking to them what to do about the pump. Uh, and they suggested one of these and very kindly pulled one off a junk car and sent it to me with all the bolts and everything. So step one, I am going to put on some gloves, try and clean off this area as much as I can, put some carburetor under underneath. Then see if I can start loosening things off. And I'm also going to take it and siphon out the fluid out of here to try and not spill it. Uh, so we'll try not to make as much of a mess. Okay, so a slight, slight change of plan. I realized that this was a little bit too ambitious when I tried a few things. So one of the things I will need to do is remove that bottom hose there because that feeds over there and puts oil to both the pumps and you know remove that hose down there the one with the silver thing on it there that brings oil down to the power steering pump and bring a new hose between there i tried very carefully to try and remove the hose from over there and i'm it's cold outside and i'm really afraid that i'm gonna snap that and if i do i'm just i'm very stuck so the thing is it's not you know actively dripping that badly so what I'm going to do is, um, not what I usually like to do, but sometimes you're in an emergency situation. I'm going to put this back together. I'm going to clean off the area as much as I can, um, you know, fill up the fluid, and hopefully it will be fine. To be an inspection, sometimes they're, uh, sometimes they're pretty okay with, you know, older British cars leaking a little bit. They all do. It's the only sort of leak this thing has. 
and it's really only a leak when it's been sitting for a long time. So I'm going to wipe it off, you know, drive there, get inspected, and, you know, five minutes later, hopefully out of there. And then I will fix this in the future. I'm also going to, um, I have checked that someone actually pretty local to me has one of these available for the cars that don't have self-leveling suspension. And I'll probably buy that because it mounts up. It will look nicer than plugging something off and then, you know, get all the hoses. I do have a hose in the size at home, but just if I snap that thing down there, I'm very much stuck. So sorry about that. I'll put that back together and then we can move on to some more simpler things like replacing the wheels and having a look at some of the lights. The next small thing I want to fix is nothing really major, but the last time I drove the car or second or third last to that, when I closed the door, this fell off. And it's supposed to sit on here. I think it just pushes into place there and then it locks here somehow. But that is uh, not working for some reason. So I'm going to try just a uh, little bit of an epoxy here on here. See if I can get it to um, hopefully stick on there. If not, um, that doesn't work. I'll have to come back to this. But like you know, this is all sort of just happening on, on the weekend. Trying to fix what I can. So I can start using this car next week again. So that's how it's supposed to sit, right like that. So my idea is then I have some two-part epoxy here, which should work on pretty much everything and sets in like four hours or something. So I'm gonna mix some, put some on these little protrusions here and all along the edge here, push it on and hopefully, hopefully that will stick on. I just mixed up um, two parts here pretty well, I'm trying to work pretty quickly. I believe this stuff sets uh, relatively fast so I want a little bit on each of these this is definitely not the correct way to do this but you know sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do and well first of all I think it looks really bad with it off but I also think it would be an MOT failure because I think this will count as a sharp object in the way of a pedestrian or something so I think that this has to go on for that reason as well. Okay, let's see. All right, that is in place now. So uh, yeah, I'll have to wait a couple hours, see if if that does the trick. Hopefully it does. Maybe um, maybe I'll get a little bit of tape just to pull over here so it sits on there as tight as possible before it sets. So I'm gonna run off to the workshop, get some tape put on there. Got some tape here just to hold it on as tight as possible. Well, it sets. All right, that should be good. We'll come back to that uh, probably tomorrow since it's pretty cold. Hopefully that will be set. It's the next day. We ended up doing some nice things with the family yesterday, so I didn't continue working on the cars. But now I'm about to start the sort of half complicated wheel dance, if you can call it. So the wheels off the XJ6 are going on the XJ40. Uh, these are just going off to the side and in the summer I will have new tires uh, fitted to them and I'm going to clean them up. See if I will restore them or just clean them up. I cleaned up one of them in the back and that one actually turned out pretty nice. So that leaves this car needing some tires on it. I'll put on the wheels that were on it during the summer just with the pretty much brand new summer tires. They look a little terrible here now but I do have a set of pretty much new ones so I haven't actually bothered doing anything with them. They're going off, but no point in doing that right now. These may actually go on the XJ12 because that one does need new tires. And if this ends up being parked for a while, I might put those on the Series 2 XJ12. Just as a thing because they're not going to get any better by just sitting these tires. It's much better to use them. So uh started by jacking up just this side. So these off, those on, these off, and then those on to there. About halfway through, getting the winter tires here on the Daimler. I'll be down the other side, so uh, so far everything looks great. I remember looking over the brakes, that was a long time ago when I got it, and 
All the discs and pads are pretty much brand new on this car, so that's great. Even these beefy tires on there. Might not be the prettiest on these black rims, but they have really saved me a couple times this winter. They really, uh, I just really forgot the lug nuts, but they're really, really, really good grip. This car came with uh, two sets of lug nuts because these tires use these with a tapered end or these wheels and the other ones used the traditional ones used on all the alloys on Jags. I'm using an electric one of these windy guns just to put it on and then I'll go around with a torque wrench when all they're done just to torque them up. I'm going to check online what the spec is, can't really remember off heart. And then I will do that again. Check the torque after just, you know, a couple miles or so. On to the last corner over here, and I realized I remembered one thing incorrectly. It doesn't have new discs all the way around, but it does have new discs in the rear and new pads all the way around. So there's a little bit of a lip on these. Pads are brand new, but they'll be fine until these pads are worn out and then it's time for uh, pads and discs up front, but there's plenty of life left in that, so no problems there. And everything else looks really fine. Once again, I checked over things when I got it. Bushings and things look fine. There are no real cracks or anything. It rides nicely, so hopefully you're not going to find any major faults with this car. If you're wondering a little bit about the mud over there, especially in the back, that's because I tried to move this thing out of the workshop late November, early December, and I got stuck in mud and I barely got it back in. And then I just let it dry on there. Didn't want to wash it off in the workshop. But as soon as we get this thing out of here, I'll try and get some of this off with the hose and might get this thing a real proper wash actually before we go to get inspected, but at least get the dirt off. So I will put the last wheel on here. And then I'm going to put the interior back together, like I said, off camera, you saw me take it all apart. Put that back together, and then I think we're pretty much done. It's just, I think, a bulb somewhere, I believe it's one of the Parkers up front. I'll check which one it is. Then we got to fill the um, power steering fluid back up, and I think we're ready to go. The interior is all back together, just hooked up the battery, turn on the Parkers. One thing that's really neat with this car, that these still work. The little lights under here to, uh, I guess, illuminate the engine bay if something happens. They're kind of neat, but I believe that there was one Parker not working on this car. And yep, that one is not lighting up, but that one is. So let's turn that off, open up here. Let's try and figure out what kind of bulb that is. I've taken the bulb out. That was really straightforward. Just two screws and then the lens cover. However, it looks to be um, intact and I just ohmed it out and it is. We put this back in and put on the main headlights and everything and see if this one lights up then. The mystery continues and it's just gotten worse. So I switched the bulbs around to both sides, figured uh, just to see if there was any difference. Both bulbs are fine because both of them work on this side. I took the multimeter out and I measured. I get 12 volts over there in the socket. It's not very corroded. They clean it up and lubricate it. It's fine, still get 12 volts. So let's take this bulb for instance. Just if I can see, lights up. Let me bring it over to this side. And nothing. Not even, not even trying. And if I probe that right now, which is hard to do while holding the camera, I get 13, 12, 13 volts out there. And you can see everything is really super nice and clean. So, I don't know, a little bit stuck here. Um, I'm gonna have to do some more troubleshooting. That front bulb there has me, um, I don't really know what to do about it, to be honest at the moment. I think I'm gonna have to think about it a little bit and come back to it a little bit later. You know, sometimes when you're under a little bit of stress, you don't, you don't really see the obvious thing. So it's weird, it's getting power. There's nothing wrong with the bulb. I switched them back and forth, they both work. Cleaned out the contacts, everything's nice and clean. Uh, so uh, 
I'll have to come back to it a little bit later, but it's Sunday evening. I'm running out of time a little bit. I want to spend, of course, some time with the family. So I'm going to pull the car out, just go for the briefest test drive, just make sure that it you know, goes for the gears, stops, all of that. And then tomorrow, we'll go for the MOT. As you can probably tell, it's the next day. I'm on my lunch break, on my way to see if the XJ40 here will pass its MOT. And you can probably tell by while well, I'm wearing sunglasses, and it is the first really nice day, sort of a spring here. All the snow is starting to melt. All the roads are clear. It's just snow on the fields now. And I believe it's almost maybe eight or close to 10 degrees Celsius at the moment. It's, it's crazy. It was uh, below freezing this morning. But now it is, uh, it's really, really nice out. So on my way, hoping this thing is gonna pass, I was unable to um, fix the light issue. I've uh, done a lot of troubleshooting and it must be the bulb failure module. So the weird thing is, with everything on, I am getting a voltage out there, but it's way too high. I mean, it's somewhere like 17 volts or something, but absolutely no amperage. So if there's something in that bulb control module, or bulb failure module, I mean. There are four, four of those on the XJ40, uh, one in each corner. The right and left, so front right and left and rear right and left can be swapped around. So at a later time, I will swap the front right and the front left, to see if that makes a difference. If it does, I will see if I can take it apart and maybe fix it with, because uh, usually, apparently it's uh, bad solder joints in them and you can fix it. Or I'll see if I can get a, uh, a spare use one, but I've uh, understood that they're different for different markets. This is a Swedish car with, uh, you know, automatic headlights, and they're different if you have the um, square lights or if you have the quad lights. So I gotta look at the part number and try and get the right one. Hopefully the tester understands that, well, it's an old car, things go wrong. Sometimes they're nice and they'll just tell you, you know, fix that bolt before, um, you know, ASAP, or they'll say, come back in 30 days. Even if this thing does fail on a couple of points here in Sweden, as long as it doesn't fail, you know, extremely terribly, you can drive the car for 30 days, fix the faults, come back and test it again. I hope it's not gonna fail on anything, but if it does, I hope it's one of those failures where I can drive it again. Even though it's kind of expensive every single time you gotta go, just the first time you go now, it's about 500 Swedish Krone, which is, you know, 55, 60 dollars, something like that. And the second time around is a little bit less, maybe $45, $50. So uh, you don't want to go back too many times. Also, it's a hassle, you got to book a time. And, you know, I'm sacrificing my lunch break at the moment. But I'm about to pull out here on the highway, go there. My test is in about 20 minutes. And I don't think I will be able to film during it. There's uh, also a COVID thing. I probably can't even be near the car during the time. But if I can, I will. Otherwise, you'll see me afterwards when we have the results. Well, a really kind MOT man let me have a look underneath really quickly. And first time I've seen this thing underneath. It's been on the ground and, yeah, doesn't really look too bad at all. But uh, we'll see what he finds. All right, I have the results here. And... Not bad. I mean, it didn't pass, but they're two very small things. So they're giving me 30 days to fix them so I can drive it. I was a little worried because when I got here, I thought that one of the right wheels, I thought it felt a little hot. So I'm going to have a look at that myself because maybe it was just, you know, parking brakes are sticking a little bit. It's been sitting for a while. I, by mistake, applied the parking brake when I had it in storage. Didn't really think about it. So maybe that's it. But let's see, the brake results are, are really good, especially... Um, especially in the back they are perfectly even so whatever it was it fixed itself so the two issues are the light up front that parker light that we've already talked about i'm going to sort that out it's probably going to be the bulb module hopefully i can fix the one i have or get a hold of another one the other one is a pretty small one but i know it's going to be slightly annoying to fix it's um 
I can't think of the, uh, all this is in Swedish, I got to translate them. It's the, um, the bellows for the, uh, power, this power steering rack. So the bellows on the side that keeps all the dirt in, it's split on the right side and that needs to be fixed as well. So I'm going to order up two of those. Hopefully, um, I'm also going to have a look how the tire rod ends look. Because sometimes you can get those off, but when you want to get them back on, they start spinning. So if they look bad, I um, might as well get new ones. But otherwise, nothing, nothing wrong at all. It's not bad. No rust. And you saw I walked really briefly underneath, or at least I, I tried to. Uh, he said uh, normally, of course, it's not allowed, but he said uh, he will look the other way while he changed his gloves. So he was very kind and very, very understanding. I told him that I was, you know, doing this for YouTube and uh, that my audience would like to see. And he said, that sounds really interesting. He was asking a lot of questions about the channel. So it's really, really cool. He said he's uh, he watches a lot of channels, but he's never met someone who actually has a YouTube channel. So he thought that was pretty cool. Anyways, I'm going to drive home now uh, and celebrate that I can actually drive this car. Uh, there may be a quick update on the way back. We're going to see how that wheel feels like. I'm going to just run an errand or two, go back, but hopefully it won't be warm or anything like that. Fingers crossed. I'm almost back home now. I made one stop and I went out and felt on uh, the rear wheels. It wasn't very far from where I had the MOT test and the right side, I mean, it felt a tiny, tiny bit warmer, but I mean, it wasn't really smelling like stuck on brakes or something. So it could just be residual heat from it possibly being stuck on a little bit before. I'm going to have a look at it though, not in this video, but um, a little bit later, see if there's something going on, see if I just need to lubricate um, some of the uh, sliding pins or, um, you know, what's going on. But it did pass the brake test. Um, also, if the brakes are dragging, it's not going to pass the test. So probably it's not something that bad. What I did a little bit further back where there was a long clear road is I uh, drove pretty quickly and reversed and, you know, hit the brakes a couple times, same before, just to sort of, you know, get them going again. This car hasn't done anything really since October or something, the last time I was out in this. And before that, I mean, I bought it, just drove it a little bit for a couple months, didn't really drive it much. And before that, it had sat for nine months. So maybe we'll have to go through some things in the future, or maybe this car just needs to be used a little bit. Other than that, it is running beautifully. No warning lights, anything. Seems like the O2 sensor fixed my fuel fail 44. None of that has come back. Nothing else really. It's been running great. The only thing is a slight like clunking up front, which since I didn't find anything on the MOT test and what it sounds like to me is the top mounts of the shock absorbers, which um, they don't really test for that. So I think that is a little worn out, which is um, not a terrible thing, but I'll order new ones and replace those at some point. But I think I have my new daily driver here, which I hope will be nice and reliable. We'll touch on wood, a lot of wood in this car. So anyways, I hope you guys like the new daily driver, which I'll have to drive now while the XJ6 is waiting its faith. I don't really know uh, what's gonna happen with it so far. I might try a few things on that engine, but I'm also looking for a new one as well. And then when it gets a little bit nicer outside, I wanna take the V12 out and use that one a little bit more. But now after driving this thing for half an hour or so, I completely remember why I bought this car. It is such a nice and comfortable place to be. It is by far my favorite interior of an older Jaguar Daimler. I mean, the interior in the XJs are, I mean, they're, they're gorgeous, but this one is just so comfortable and it is really gorgeous as well. And it's really well laid out. Everything is sort of where you want it to be. It's, it's, a, um, it's a very, very nice place to be. Anyways, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Lomitha Classic. I'll see you soon.